We have Ghost of Tsushima hitting PC on May 16th, and we finally have the PC system requirements. I'm excited about this because this is a port being worked on by Nixies, and let me pause right here on the PC features trail trailer. Uh, they have an excellent track record of their ports, including all of the PC technology and support that you would like, uh, in, uh, including DLSS 3, FSR 3, XCSS, ultra-wide support, you get the dual uh, sense PS5 controller support on the uh, PC version of the game. All of that awesome stuff, but how is it going to run? We're definitely going to talk about that, and I, I've also uh, got some thoughts on these minimum requirements and the GPUs they picked here. That's a little bit odd, but before I get into that, this also marks an expansion to PlayStation's efforts on PC in general. So if you take a look at the PlayStation blog where this information was posted, Notice that they're saying that there will be an introduction of a PlayStation overlay for this PC game. And I imagine that this could then uh, maybe extend to future PlayStation releases on PC. Notice that Ghost of Tsushima has a multiplayer mode called Legends Mode, and you can, uh, you, well, you not just can, but have to sign into your PlayStation Network account for that multiplayer support, but it will have full cross-play support, uh, enabling you to have voice chat with PlayStation Network users as well as you being able to then have trophy support. Now, of course, you might be like, well, I already have Steam achievements, so why do I care? Well, this would be signing into your PlayStation account and getting the trophies on your PlayStation account rather than just having, you know, your Steam achievements and then not getting the PlayStation trophies if you have a PlayStation account and care about such things. And you'll be able to access the overlay by hitting Shift and F1 if you're playing on PC or through the game's menus. So this is pretty interesting. Now, so far, there's no word about Sony trying to do their own launcher for PC, which I think could backfire because I think you'll get better sales on Steam than trying to sell through your own launcher. I mean, maybe doing both would be fine. Uh, but I think if they did try to move away from Steam, you know, I know Steam takes like a 30% cut, but... Uh, you know, I think your sales might drop by more than 30% if you weren't available on Steam on PC. So we'll have to see how all of that goes. And again, I, as I mentioned earlier, we will get all the uh, uh, NVIDIA DLSS 3, FSR 3, XESS, all of that good stuff, ultra-wide support, everything you'd want. Uh, but what about those system requirements? Let's dive in here. So another thing I like here is that this system requirements chart gives us a lot more than some of them do. It's not just, here's the minimum to run the game, here's our recommended stuff, you take a guess at what settings or frame rates or resolutions that might be. We're getting a lot more than that. We're getting the graphics presets ranging from very low to medium to high to very high, along with the performance targets for frame rate as well as monitor resolution at each of those settings. This is how system requirements charts should be. Now, the downside here is you don't see every possible combination that you might want. For example, what if I wanted to play at medium settings at 4K, right? Now their charts are just gonna, it would be kind of overwhelming to publish a chart like that, although it would be kind of cool. This still gets us a lot of information to work with and I'll help you interpret uh, what if your graphics card doesn't uh, show up here? Or what would you need for 720p? 60 FPS, that kind of thing. But in general, uh, let's point out some of the uh, just kind of easy to talk about things. So SSD is recommended, but not necessarily required. And you will need 75 gigabytes of space. Uh, Windows 10 64-bit. And then for normal system memory, so system RAM, not VRAM, system RAM. I've had people misinterpret that in my videos like this sometimes. Eight gigabytes to get the game running, but it looks like you'd want 16 gigabytes for the game to run well. Now, none of that's too crazy. And then if we look at the, uh, the CPUs, nothing seems too crazy either. We'll have a lot more discussion about the graphics cards. Uh, one thing I, I, can I just mention, I really like on the CPU thing here, is they don't seem to be overkilling it uh, when they go up to their 4K60 recommendations. So many games, uh, when they publish system requirements, increase the CPU requirement in their chart when going from 1440p60 to 4K60. And that's nonsense because as I've talked about in recent videos about CPU bottlenecks, the work a CPU does doesn't usually scale with resolution. The increasing the resolution doesn't usually add much, if any, burden to the CPU. 
Uh, but graphic settings can, although most of them don't. Uh, but I mean, certain things like NPC density, like crowd density, things like that might, uh, physics settings and things like that. But in general, if your CPU can achieve a certain frame rate uh, at, at one resolution, it should be able to achieve the same frame rate at another resolution. So, uh, but again, some graphic settings could have some impact on that. So it's looking like for a nice uh, high settings, 1440p, 60 FPS experience, in other words, uh, an 11400 from Intel or Ryzen 5 5600 from AMD should be good for a 60 FPS experience in this game, possibly better, but we at least know it should be good for at least 60 FPS according to the system requirements chart. Now, if we take a look at these CPUs, that's nothing too crazy. The 11400 is a six core 12 thread CPU uh, from March of uh, 2021. So nothing too crazy, mid-range chip from a few years ago. And the Ryzen 5 5600 is also a six core 12 thread chip uh, from, uh, from uh, 2022. Now, you could also, it looks like, get 60 FPS, although perhaps maybe less stably or, um, you know, maybe at some somewhat reduced settings on a i5-8600 or a Ryzen 5 3600. So that's basically on Intel taking a few generations of a step back, but keep in mind that the 10th and 11th generations uh, were a very similar performance and also the 8th and the 9th generations were very similar performance. So really it's kind of like one step back in, in generational performance. Uh, for Intel here, and then this is also one step back for the Ryzen's. Now, this is interesting to me because the Ryzen 5 3600 performs very similarly to the CPU in the PlayStation 5. Uh, now, the PlayStation 5 would technically be more like an eight core version of it, but some of those cores I think are kind of reserved for what the system's doing. So I think as in terms of gaming workloads, uh, the Ryzen 5 3600 is a decent analog for what the uh, PlayStation 5 CPU performance could be. And if we take a look at that, again, it's a six core 12 uh, thread chip from 2019. Uh, the Intel uh, equivalent they're throwing up there is the i5-8600, which is six cores with only six threads, and this one from 2018. So I don't think they're asking for too much to get 60 FPS or more off of your CPU. And I, like I said, I think the, the 3600 makes a lot of sense as being similar to what's in a PlayStation 5. Speaking of which, the PlayStation 5 does run the game at 60 FPS. I pulled up some Eurogamer articles, which are based on Digital Foundry's uh, analysis of Ghosts of Tsushima, uh, which had a PlayStation 4 Pro and, and Pro version of the game running at 30 FPS, but then the PS5 version of the game does run at 60 frames per second at fairly high resolutions, which will be interesting when we talk about the GPU um, for the PC version of the game. Also, it's unclear at this point how much the graphics could be upgraded over the PS5 version. Uh, but basically it is confirming that the game does run at 60 frames per second, and it has a frame rate option that sticks to 1800p at 60 frames per second. Uh, or it has a full 4K resolution, except these are checkerboard, both of these would be checkerboarded. Uh, and again, also I think running at 60 frames per second. Now checkerboarded resolutions are actually a form of upscaling. So it's uh, not exactly actually rendering at that full, that full resolution. I think one axis gets cut in half and then interlaced if I understand checkerboarding correctly, which is different than how PCs do upscaling. And like we said, Remember that uh, we will be having DLSS and FSR and XESS upscaling uh, in this game. So I think this brings us to a discussion of the GPUs, except maybe I'll mention that if you just wanna run the game at minimum settings and get 30 frames per second, they are saying you could go back on your CPU as far back as a 7100 from AMD, sorry, from Intel, the way they've formatted this is a little bit rough, and then a Ryzen uh, 3 1200 from, uh, from AMD. Now, if we actually go back to those, the i3-7100 is not only several generations old by now, but it's only a dual core processor, but it does have hyper threading. So it's two cores, four threads, and we're talking all the way back in 2017. So a seven-year-old CPU, a seven-year-old dual core CPU with hyper threading can theoretically run this game Although again, it's probably 30 FPS, and if that's an average, it wouldn't surprise me if you dipped below that. But again, 
Uh, this game was originally a PlayStation 4 compatible game, which means that the PlayStation 4 had a very weak CPU. So actually, I think it makes sense that the CPU requirements here aren't crazy to hit the same 30 FPS that the, the PlayStation 4 could do. Now the Ryzen 3 1200 is four cores with four threads. So still only four threads and again, 2017. So it's looking like low end chips from 2017 are confirmed as good enough to get you at least a 30 FPS experience in the game with the settings turned way down. I don't know if there's any like crowd density things that are be being turned down there or anything like that. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, I think the most interesting thing for most PC gamers, which is the GPUs. But again, don't forget the CPUs do matter. Uh, so if we look at this, I'll say that if you ignore this box, the rest of these make a lot of sense to me, okay? So in the low end box, the 5500 XT from AMD and the 960 from Nvidia are worlds apart in performance. The 5500 XT is significantly better. So these seem like a very strange pairing for this chart. The rest of these pairings seem like they actually make sense in terms of being pretty similar in overall performance, even if it's not as exa exactly the same. Another really important note, many 960s were not four gigabyte graphics cards. So if I pull up tech power up, which is also where I was refer referencing the CPU stuff, uh, the, uh, sorry, the RX 70, 6700 I have up here, cause this is roughly ballpark equivalent to the PlayStation 5 GPU. So this is just interesting to have as a comparison point. But if I pull up a GTX 960, this is significantly weaker than what we're seeing in, in a, uh, like a PlayStation 5, for example. And this is normally a two gigabyte graphics card, although I believe four gigabyte versions were also released. So note that if you have a 960 and you're like, oh good, I'm fine, I would hesitate on that one because they are specifically highlighting that four gigabyte requirement. Now, if we look at the 5500 XT from AMD, uh, uh, well, uh, let's actually go up to the relative performance chart. Now this isn't perfect. And especially as GPUs are older and comparing them to new GPUs, uh, sometimes in newer games, they end up performing worse than what we're seeing in this chart, but this will give you a good idea of where does your GPU fall relative to these. It's also going to explain why I think this is a weird pairing. So if you have a 960, uh, that's, you know, ballpark equivalent 1050 TI, but again, they did mention the four gigabytes of VRAM. So, 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 uh, Keep that in mind. Now, stronger than this would be something like an ARC A380. Uh, if you have one of the lower end Intel GPUs, current hardware, like something like an RX 6400, again, would be stronger than a 960. But notice, uh, you know, a GTX 970 would of course be stronger than a 960. So you might be somewhere in this ballpark. Maybe you're finding your GPU here. The GTX 1060 would be significantly stronger than a 960. And you might have a six gigabyte card here instead of a, but watch out, there are some three gigabyte versions, which could be falling short of that four gigabytes that it seems to be specifying. So there's some nuance here, but then we get to the 5500 XT, which according to this relative performance chart, which whether or not it's perfectly accurate for this game or not, 78 performance uh, percent performance difference is massive. So I'm wondering if that just happened to be the oldest Nvidia GPU that they tested. And maybe this happened to be the oldest AMD GPU that they tested, or maybe they're looking for having, uh, you know, what driver support looks like. I'm not quite sure. This seems strange. And apparently both of these are delivering a 720p 30 FPS experience at very low settings. And that's such a wide variety of performance ranges, uh, excuse me, that, um, that just seems weird to me. So just throwing that out there. What would you want if you wanted to play it? 60 frames per second at 720p. Well, you'd probably need to roughly double your performance, but are you doubling the 960? In which case you're, all, you're at the 5500 XT, uh, you know, a little bit stronger than that. Doubling that performance would be like a 1660. Or are you, uh, you know, doubling the performance of the 5500 XT, which would be a, a significantly different situation. Now, uh, another thing I want to know, if we set the 5500 XT as the baseline, then um, where does this fall relative to something like, uh, like I said, like the PlayStation 5 version of the game? Well, the PlayStation 5 version of the game would be, you know, on roughly similar hardware to something like an RX 6700. So if you, if you kind of scroll up for that, you have to go quite a ways. So, so a 6700 is going to be, uh, 
I get. Uh, I guess they don't always list it on the on this chart, right? So I think that's why I had I had the 6700 pulled up uh, separately. So if we look at the 6700 as the baseline, and we go back to a 5500 XT, the 5500 XT is going to be back here at roughly half the performance, right? So if it's roughly half the performance, then you would be expecting, you know, the PlayStation 5 to be kind of doubling what we're seeing on these minimums. This seems like less than half of what we're getting from a PlayStation 5. So I, I, I'm wondering if the 960 or somewhere in between this is actually what you would need for here. But anyway, that's a lot of speculation on that. The rest of this stuff seems to make a lot more sense, like the 2060 paired with the 5600 XT. Uh, so why don't we take a look at that and maybe look at how these compare uh, with what we're seeing from, like I said, from like the PlayStation 5. So if we look at an RX 6700 as kind of our baseline, where does that fall uh, compared to our... Uh, like I said, the, the, the 2060 and the 5600 XT. So the 2060 is back here at about 75% of the performance and the uh, 5600 XT at about 73% of the performance of our you know PS5 type equivalent uh, GPU. So again, it would make sense that you wouldn't be quite living up to PlayStation 5 standards, which are again running 60 FPS at probably less than the maximum PC settings uh, but, you know, at higher than 1080p resolution. So this kind of makes sense to me. Um, and so for that, we're seeing the 2060 and the 5600 XT. And again, the 2060 and the 5600 XT are fairly similar in performance. Uh, so this pairing, like I said, kind of makes sense. Now, if you want to figure out where's your GPU falling, so that should get you medium settings, 1080p, 60fps. Where does yours fall relative to that? So if you're still on something like a 1080, uh, you might be right in this ballpark, although sometimes older GPUs like the 10 series underperform relatively to newer GPUs in, in you know, DX12 games using a lot of modern features. So something to keep an eye out for. A 1070 Ti is not too far off of this. An RTX 3050 is a bit weaker than this, but it's not worlds apart from a 2060. So you might be kind of okay on that class of hardware. But again, maybe you're not getting the full 60 FPS all the time, that kind of a thing. Um, if you're a little bit stronger, something like an RTX 3060 should be able to overperform here in ARC A750, as long as in, it's not one of the games where Intel underperforms, <laughs> uh, should be okay here. Something like an RX 6600 should be fine here. So uh, that's kind of where we're looking for 1080p 60fps. Now, as we jump up to uh, 1440p 60fps and bump up to high settings, which I have a feeling would probably be sort of like PS5-ish equivalent graphics, but we don't know for sure. That's speculation. They're asking for an RTX 3070 or an RX 6800. These would be more powerful than what a PlayStation 5 is delivering. So if an RX 6700 is roughly our PS5 game, uh, you know, you know, uh, equivalent, then an RX 6800 uh, would be about 44% faster. So that if that's not getting you more frame rate, which would be one thing, it could be getting you more resolution uh, or higher graphics settings. So this, this kind of makes sense. And the 3070 and the 6800 are fairly close in, in performance. If I set the 3070 as the baseline, the 6800 is usually a bit faster, maybe about 10%. More if it's uh, if the 3070 starts running into VRAM issues. So one thing you'll notice here is that this is an eight gigabyte graphics card and this is a 16 gigabyte graphics card, but they're listing both of them here as fine. So that would indicate that it's probably not gonna be an issue to run the game on eight gigabyte graphics cards at 1440p 60 at high settings if we can live with this chart. Now we don't know if that would still be okay for very high settings, but they do indicate that 4K60 is also okay. So again, at high settings, it sounds like eight gigabyte graphics cards are probably doing okay in this game. Although again, this is just system requirements. We don't know how that'll bear out in actual benchmark testing. So the last thing we've got here is very high settings at 4K60. So you wanna max out the game. They're basically saying, well, get yourself a really powerful modern GPU. 4K60 is a lot. Now you might be like, well, the PlayStation 5 version runs at 4K60. Keep in mind that it's checkerboarded. Checkerboarding is at least cutting, I think, one resolution in half and interlacing. So you could think of that as half the pixels if I understand checkerboarding correctly. So it's actually um, a lot easier to do 4K checkerboarded than a full 4K. And also 
it wouldn't surprise me if the very high max settings on PC are higher graphical fidelity than the PlayStation 5 can deliver. So if we look at our RX 6700 as our kind of our, our PS5 stand-in, roughly, again, I know it's not perfect, then what, how much faster is a 4080? A 4080 is 2.5 times faster. A 7900 XT is 2.23 times, times the speed. So if you're basically not checkerboarding, you're doing a full 4K, that does pretty much account for that plus a little bit of increasing the graphics. So actually all of this sounds pretty reasonable to me. And it looks like people on fairly low end systems should at least be able to uh, experience the game at, at, you know, at 720p 30. So cool stuff. I'm excited to see what we get out of this. Nixies has a really good track record for their PlayStation, uh, PlayStation to PC ports. So I'm, I'm very excited that we're seeing this studio do that. Uh, again, the launch date is May 16th. And again, we're gonna be seeing all of this interesting um, PlayStation overlay and PlayStation achievement, trophy achievements on, on the PC platform, uh, which I think is further indication that PlayStation is taking their PC uh, support more and more seriously. What I'd like to see next is starting to get day one PC versions of their games. And I'm wondering if we're moving closer towards that as it seems like they, they are making good sales, making good money, and taking their PC ports more and more seriously. So cool stuff. Hopefully you guys found the video useful and or interesting. Huge thank you to channel viewers, commenters, subscribers, and especially members who click the join button to directly support the channel financially. That's absolutely huge. So huge uh, thank you to everybody who's done that. Totally understand not everybody can do it. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.